One of the things that I've been asked since I put up the original Roadcaster virtual audio channel video was, how do I get this up and running? Now, Rogo details this quite a bit on their website. And um, if you take a look at that, you probably could get up and running. But if you have no familiarity at all with the Rodecaster Pro 2 or the Rodecaster Duo, maybe this video will help you out a little bit. So stick around if you're looking to get this set up quick and easy. Okay. So the first step, you need to download the beta version of both the Roadcasters uh, Road Central and also the firmware for your device. To do that, I just did a quick Google search. You can do this too, but you can see here, how can I access the beta firmware? So I'm gonna show you this step right here, but you wanna make sure first things first is that you sign up for the Roadcaster beta program and that is that that link will bring you here and you can see you just enter in your name email address and the product serial number the product serial number is going to be on the underside of your product it's also available to you in road central uh if you can't find it on the back of your machine or the back of your machine is not readily accessible but you're going to need a serial number to be able to register for the program now once you've gotten that what you'll do is you'll get a link from Rode to the latest version of both Rode Central and the firmware for your system. And you want to download both of those. So run the update for Rode Central. And when you run that update, make sure, I've noticed with the beta program, make sure that you do not update uh, when it prompts you the first time you run the software. Meaning after you install, the first time you actually click Road Central to start it up, you, now you've just downloaded the latest version, right? But then it's telling you there's a new version available. It, it's not. It is the latest version of the released software, not the beta software. So make sure to do not update. Now they may fix this at some point in the installer. I'm not sure, but just keep in mind, that the latest version, the one that you just downloaded is the one you want to run with, not what the software is telling you when you run it for the first time. So when you run Road Central, you, what you'll get is this interface here and your device. If your device is not showing here, chances are it's not connected correctly to your machine. So you need to go through all the troubleshooting steps to make sure that that is showing up on your system. Clicking on it will pull up your settings for the various things that you can do here through Road Central. Uh, device configuration, if I click on uh, information here, it'll show me my serial number. I'm not gonna pull that up for obvious reasons. But then also there's a little gear icon up here in the upper right hand corner. And you can click on that and if you'll see this is thing called available firmware at the very top here if i click that it will show me the current roadcaster pro 2 serial uh the the firmware number and what it would be uh quote unquote upgrading me to but this is obviously a downgrade 143 to 134 so it won't let me do anything here i can't can't click it so it's just closed it's not letting me downgrade uh, optional firmware updates, you want to leave this set to on here. And everything else you can leave alone. So this is this is Road Central. Make sure that you have this installed and it recognizes your device. Now, let's go ahead and set up how we're going to do this on the Rodecaster Pro itself. Now, I'm running the Pro 2. The, the same steps apply for the Duo. So I'm not going to keep saying Rodecaster Pro 2 and Duo. Just assume at any time, unless I say something otherwise, I mean both devices, okay? So we'll go over into the, th this is my screen here of my Rodecaster Pro. I'll click on the little gear icon up upper right hand corner, and then I'll go to system, and then I'll go to information. Now I just did this on the Rode Central software, but obviously if I say click for update, it says firmware's up to date, Click to retry, I don't need to do that. But this is the part that you wanna be concerned about. View device information. 
Now you can see here, it, there's this black box, right? And if I tap this black box 12 times, it'll put it in this beta mode. You see the beta mode right there? That's what you want. When you put it in beta mode and then you go back and say, check for update right here, it should update your software. Now, the only time that I've noted that it doesn't update the firmware is if there's some kind of network connection issue. And I have noticed that Wi-Fi is not always stable, meaning it will sometimes lose connection. And I, and I know this to be a fact because I've been trying it on the 143 version of the firmware and it's still doing it. So if you've connected your Rodecaster Pro to, to the network on Wi-Fi in the past and it's worked, and then you try and download it again and saying network connection not available, just power cycle. Don't pull the power, but power cycle your Rodecaster Pro and then go back to this menu and then it will show you uh, hopefully a better network connection that is active and enabled and allows you to pull down the firmware. In the event that you don't get, you can't get the latest firmware through the interface here, you might be able to download it from the Road website and then install it that way through Road Central. But I, generally speaking, I, I find that if you just do it through the device, it works fine. Um, in the past, it has hung up on me, but I think they have fixed that. <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think they've fixed it. So just, you know, if you have any issues with that, you can always download the, the version from the, the website as well. Okay. So back to here and how do I turn on virtual channels? If you've, if you've gone through the process and you are now, uh, you've got your software installed, what you will see is right here, uh, you'll see there's a little word beta over the gear now. And that beta means that you're in beta mode and you've got the beta software installed. And so now what you need to do is you click that gear icon and you're going to configure your faders, okay? So to do that, you go to outputs first, and then you go to multi-track and you'll see USB one input now, right? Click on expanded and it'll say, uh, be, it'll be interrupted, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. So we're back. We're back now. <laughs> it was interrupted as, as they promised. And now if I click on home, you'll see, well, first of all, I, I don't have one fader configured, a physical fader configured here, and there's a blank spot here. So how do I configure this for the new virtual channels? Because I just enabled virtual channels. I click on plus, and now you can see there's four smaller buttons in here. Those are your virtual channels. Okay. So I want to be on this right hand one. I'm going to have it set to music. And if I click the check mark, you see that lights up now. And if I go home, music is now set up here. I can also go to faders here and click on virtual. And let's say I want to run with a here, B here, and game here. Okay, so now I've got virtual channels A, B, and game is assigned to my virtual faders. So virtual channels going into virtual faders. Click home, and now they all show up. And that's it. You're set up at that point. Now, how you set that up, how you get that all working is that now you can define where your audio is routed from your system into the Rodecaster Pro. I use loopback. Since I did the original video of this virtual channel um, stuff, I, 
uh, uh, Rode has released a version of their virtual channel software that is working on a, on a Mac. It's a virtual driver. However, I prefer to use Loopback. Number one, I've invested in it. <laughs> it's not cheap. It's a hundred bucks. But number two, it gives me far more control over what devices I am using and what software I'm using and what faders I'm using and the channels. I, I have complete control over all of that. And it gives me, I, at least in my mind, it gives me a lot more control than anything that I could do through the user interface on the Mac. Let me just g give you a quick little tidbit of this so that you can see what I talk about in the other video on setting up loopback. So I'll go back into my other screen here and then go into loopback. And you can see here, loopback has, um, it has a few things that are worth noting. First of all, uh, it's kind of got this connection based interface. Uh, this is a, what I call a container user interface where you're, you have these containers and you're wiring them to other containers and it's basically outputs going to inputs and then outputs again, going to more inputs. And what I've done here is I've created four virtual channels and these correspond with the four new virtual channels on the Rodecaster Pro. And so why does this give me more control over what road ships? Well, you see here inside this particular interface, I can say my QuickTime player music, Google Chrome and GarageBand all play through this uh, output channel here, channels one and two, and then they get piped into channels five and six, which happen to correspond with what the music channel is inside the new virtual uh, channels in the Rodecaster Pro. This allows me way more control because now, for instance, I can say, well, Chrome is only gonna come in at half volume, for instance, or music. I have complete control over how this is all defined. And, it, and it's, to me, it's way, way easier to set up than uh, doing it the old fashioned way, which is picking inputs and then selecting drivers inside the sound system. But you can see here, I've got virtual A, virtual B, virtual game, and virtual music. And those correspond with, let me go to my system settings here. You can see here, I've got virtual A, virtual B, virtual game, virtual music. These are all defined by the fact that I am using the, um, the loopback software to create these channels. You notice that they're all virtual channels. So again, this is all covered in the next video on how I set this up. You really have a lot of control, a lot of power over your virtual channels when you're using something like loopback. Matter of fact, I haven't even installed the road, the, the new update from road that enables virtual channels on the Mac because loopback to me is, is a very powerful product. Cause it, right now I'm just doing very basic stuff. I'm just routing, uh, audio from apps and devices into a channel on my roadcaster pro, but man, you could have routing going all over the place and it would. It could get, well, it could get pretty insane, but it, what it would allow you to do is split channels up. You could pipe this channel here, pipe this channel here at a reduced level, for instance. And then you, you have way more control over the output and the routing than you would ever have using just the default drivers, at least in my opinion. So if you're looking for more information about that, go ahead and check out this video here. If you found this video at all helpful, I would appreciate a like and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye.